it's an interesting thing. This COVID business has kept my wife and I pretty much at home. And in one of the nice blessings of God, she happens to like me, I happen to like her. So it's almost felt like a long-term vacation. Now, <laughs> it feels kind of bad. We watch the news and we think, oh my goodness, what on earth is going on out there? And in our own home, uh, it's sort of a treat uh, to be on by ourselves and having a vacation. Now, going off on vacation while the world is falling apart, I don't know if that's the best idea in the world. However, it's pretty obvious that a lot of things are being stirred up in this present mess to almost um, somewhere between a frightening and a fascinating thing. We obviously have political instability going on with the present election and political instability in different places in the world. We've got a plague, COVID-19. And we have persistent emerging threats uh, around the world, which um, it would be interesting if radios would disappear, newspapers would disappear, TV would disappear, the internet would disappear. We would all be probably in a state of tranquility. But unfortunately, it's like having nagging neighbors. They just keep bothering us with what's going on in the neighborhood. We have perilous economic conditions. As I was leaving the home, it said the U.S.'s debt has tripled to $3 trillion. Well, with such a debt like that, it's beyond the point of worrying. And then there is the persecution of Christians uh, throughout this world, and it appears to be getting nastier and nastier. And at times, it's not all that comfortable to be a Christian in the United States. It's a conservative court, uh, source, liberal source. We're at the point, I think, of looking at it and wondering how much is accuracy and how much is manipulation. So with that going on, it might be well for Christians to sit back and think, how am I supposed to live in this vortex of stuff going around? And how should I look at, long, at present events, future events, and my own place as a believer in the midst of them? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, in a sense, put the problems of humanity in a long-term picture, and then zoom in on our present place in this world and how we're supposed to react. First of all, we're going to look at the big picture so that, in a sense, we can be philosophic about our place in the big picture. But then, on the other hand, we'll deal with what's our day-to-day -day responsibility. Well, as we all know, the human condition is a reflection of the universal condition, and that in the Bible, there are two great rebellions, a heavenly re rebellion and an earthly rebellion. The heavenly rebellion was in the heavenly paradise where God is at and God the Son is at. It was totally in the light. One third of the angels chose to trust Lucifer, son of the early morning, whose name is also Satan, chose to trust him in, in contradiction to God. And so in a sense, they were led to choose another source of good 
a choice of supposed good over God. Whatever the reason, one third of the spirit beings chose to follow Satan. We don't know what it is, but he must be a fantastic sales person. Then as a result of that, one third of the spirit beings were condemned. And all of this comes from Revelation where the great dragon swept one third of the stars from heaven and it certainly appeared to be a reference to spirit beings. So we have this ratio that one out of three of the heavenly creatures chose to believe God. Now, this is going to be an odd observation, but when it came to tempting beings, persons, Satan had a one third successful sales rate. So let, let's presume that one out of three, every, every time he would approach another spirit being to talk that spirit being into rebellion, in his head, he had a one out of three chance. Now let's go over to the earth. And what we have here is an earthly paradise. What we have here <clears throat> is Adam and Eve in the light. What we have here is a repetition of what happened in the heavenlies. Satan is trusted. And what we have blatantly there is the choice of supposed good over God, the choice of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the great difference, though, and this is tremendously important, tremendously important, the implication for angels and spirit beings is that they are all individual creations. And as individual creations, they individually fell. But for humanity, and this is incredibly important and should not ever be forgotten, there was a corporate condemnation. One man chose and that man was Adam, who I think is probably the most unpopular person in heaven. That man, Adam, chose. And as a result, the entire race, all of humanity, fell with him. We didn't choose in him. He chose, and we ended up corporately condemned. Now, when you have two individuals, Adam and Eve, let's apply the same ratio. One out of three chances there was to tempt Eve, that she would go along. But even if Eve went along, theoretically, there would be one out of, out of three chances that Adam would go along. So in a sense, he had a one out of six chance of talking Adam and Eve into agreeing together to fall. Now, the fall was with Adam. The Bible is very clear on that. Now, why have this silly thing about one out of three and one out of six? This is very important. Humanity and spirit beings were made in the image of God they had a choice. They had a choice. If Adam refused to go along, the history of humanity would be absolutely different, and God would still use humanity as an illustration to the universe of his goodness and kindness to those who are faithful. Unfortunately, Adam did not go along. So in the human condition, we have a corporate fall. And according to the Apostle Paul in Romans 5, we all inherited sin through him. Romans 5.12. Therefore, as, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death, two types, spiritual death, dead to a relationship to God, and eventually physical death but the spiritual death being the dangerous one. 
and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sin with him. Then there's a historical tragedy that goes beyond what Adam did. And this is in Romans. Now we're looking at an overview of the history of humanity. And when we look at problems, human problems, we need a context. We need a stage. We need a platform to look at human problems. And the platform the Bible gives is the fall of humanity in Adam and then the historic problem of the vast majority of human beings choosing a different view of God in the face of how God revealed himself in creation and in Revelation, where he personally showed up on earth as described in Genesis 1 through 11. And because humanity chose a false view of God in the ancient world, and humanity is still choosing a false view of God, where humanity, much of humanity, looks at the universe and says, ah, pure chance and cosmic evolution, which is simply placing something else, a scientific view, in place of God. So in the book of Romans, it says there's two revelations going on continually. A wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who are continually suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Now notice that's Romans 1.18. The verse before, it talks about the righteousness of God, where out of sheer righteousness, and part of righteousness is compassion, The righteousness of God is revealed out of faith, unto faith, as it is written, but the righteous person shall live by faith. Two things continually, according to Paul, are being revealed in this world. First of all, there is a wrath of God, which we'll see what that is. And then secondly, a gospel righteousness talked about being revealed. Now, the world sloughs off oftentimes the gospel is just strange news. But it's astounding news that the creator, the son of God, died for his creation, died for humanity. 